So Advent, as you may know, is the first rigorously conducted randomized clinical trial comparing the results of ablation of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation with the Faripulse pulse field ablation system versus traditional thermal techniques for sensing radio frequency and the cryo balloon. And couldn't possibly be happier with the results. We hit our primary efficacy endpoint, non-inferiority against thermal ablation. We hit our primary safety endpoint, non-inferiority against thermal ablation, and showed superiority for a secondary safety endpoint of pulmonary vein narrowing. How do we understand the primary endpoint um, that, that was selected in ADVENT? Yeah. So, so the, the endpoint in ADVENT was, was really quite rigorous. Mm -hmm. You might even argue too rigorous, in that in order to be considered a success, you had to be free of recurrent atrial fibrillation or any atrial tachyarrhythmias at the end of 12 months off of all antiarrhythmic drugs and without any reablation, even including the so-called blanking period. Mm. Uh, and in addition, we didn't just monitor for symptomatic recurrences of arrhythmias. Patients had to do weekly EKGs and at six months and 12 months underwent a full three-day Holter monitor recording to look for asymptomatic recurrences. And, and I, one of the things that was really a surprise in the trial was actually how well all of the technologies did using that strict definition. When we planned the trial, we had assumed an efficacy using that definition on the order of 65%. All right? And actually both arms of the trial did well above 70% on this definition. And it, I think it just goes to tell you, again, that you know, people who are highly experienced with radio frequency or with a cryo balloon can get exquisitely good results today, even using those technologies. And again, I'll remind everyone, we're, we're pretty pleased with our cryo balloon technology, Polar X and Polar Fit. Uh, but you can get those same results with Farapulse, even if it's your first time using the system. Oh, wow. And so if, if we were to say a, a, a low bar, like just saying you come for the procedure and then you just don't feel any more symptoms, we don't check and you could maybe continue your antiarrhythmics or anything, I'm sure that would be a very much higher uh, uh, percentage. So I think maybe in our communication of those results, that's a, those are very, very important points to remember about that primary outcome. Now, with, with the safety being uh, good and, and, and we're reassured of that and efficacy being as good as state of the art, I suppose, you know, the discussion was also a little bit sort of saying, um, not the discussion, the chairs kind of said, then, then if something's already good, why, why should we choose yeah. the fair pulse? Wow. And therefore, what was the efficiency gain, I think? is so important. And, and so one of the, again, very important findings of the trial, and, and it's particularly important as we think, you know, how do we scale the use of these kinds of therapies to the, the global epidemic yeah. of atrial fibrillation? And as you said, it's, it's epidemic in Asia, it's epidemic in North America, it's epidemic in, in Europe, you know, again, as all of our societies age, we, we just see more and more of atrial fibrillation. And again, I hardly need to point out to you, right, that I mean, atrial fibrillation is associated with heart failure, associated with stroke, associated just with, with severe OBC. symptoms. Yeah. And, and so, you know, one of the only ways you can scale this out is by having a procedure that's straightforward to do, that is safe and effective, but that also is efficient, mm. all right? And so one of the things that we found in ADVENT was a statistically significant reduction in total procedure time versus thermal ablation, a statistically significant reduction in left atrial dwell time, which again is, is very important as you think ultimately about safety for patients, and a statistically significant reduction in total ablation time. And of course, you know, this is a clinical trial, and this is people first time using the procedure. We've seen published data out of Europe where it's been commercial for a while now that, that folks are able to get down to the range of 30, 35 minutes to do a full paroxysmal AFib ablation. And you know, 
I have to admit, on a personal level, I got to witness one of these procedures in Malaysia, so in Asia, and just seeing even with a perhaps shorter experience, the procedure was incredibly efficient. So much so, I have to admit, for the first time in my entire life, I kind of was thinking, huh, maybe I should have trained as an EP instead of a heart failure cardiologist. So, you know, Ken, I think it says a lot. I mean, it was that efficient, but then also it would say a lot because I understand you also have been very open about saying you yourself have suffered atrial fibrillation. And um, what does this new data mean to you? Personally? Yeah, so again, I, I, I had atrial fibrillation. Uh, had a few episodes in Singapore at one of your meetings. Uh, and you know, eventually could not control it with lifestyle changes. Uh, and I think it's important right, to recognize, I mean, not everyone with AFib needs to be ablated. Uh, and, and there is right, good evidence for lifestyle modification. Uh, in my case, again, this was before we were doing first line therapy for paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. So tried a variety of different drugs. Uh, they all failed and I ultimately underwent an ablation. Uh, I've felt well since, uh, but I really can tell you without hesitation, if I ever need to be re-ablated, I will want to be re-ablated with the Therapol system. And again, it's, it's safer, it's at least as effective, uh, and it's a quick, straightforward procedure. And I don't know what, what more you want as a patient.